Hi folks, Tris here. Thanks for listening to Mode and Prometheus, and thanks especially to all of you who have joined our Patreon. We don't run ads, so the whole podcast is supported by you. If you'd like to help out, head over to patreon.com forward slash modemprometheus. Members get free merch, early access, bonus episodes, and a lot more exciting stuff. Today, we have a very special story for you. It's called the Modem Prometheus Holiday Special, and is, of course, about death. The old woman who is about to die taps her pencil on the smudged paper and says, 1,305.33 kilometers per hour. Precious nods. The speed of time. The woman looks up sharply. You just know that. Precious shrugs. You're not the first one to do that maths here. No, suppose not. Quite a thing, though. That bullet got fired hours ago on the other side of the world, and it's aimed right here. She taps her heart, moving at the speed of time. She picks up her whiskey glass, the one she had used earlier to trace a circle, which in the course of her calculations became tattooed with trigonometry. Another? Of course. Where is it now? Precious looks at the clock which does not, in fact, tell the time. Despite this, he knows it is a little less than 15 minutes to midnight. Still over the continent, I think. The woman sighs. You want to know the worst thing about all this? She asks. The cold. And not just the cold. The cold itself is fine. I liked it growing up. But knowing I'm never going to feel the sun again... I watched it today, watched it go down, waved goodbye. The day was so damn short. Precious nods, understanding. He's been here before. She knows he has, more times than he can count. But that also means he knows the bartender's job. A sympathetic ear, a murmur of agreement. A steady flow of whiskey. The door opens and the old woman turns to it. Look what the three-headed dog dragged in. Anna. Percy sits at the bar next to her. Porn star martini, please, precious. There is no one else here. There is no New Year's party at the Crown and Anchor. The revellers are elsewhere drinking and dancing and singing loudly about things forgot and never brought to mind. Precious has never forgotten a thing in his life and soon will sleep. His year started a week ago when the sun aligned with the stone circle in his basement. But there is one ritual he needs to be part of tonight. So he mixes Percy's drink, heavy on the passion fruit, easy on the lime. He places it in front of her with a garnish of pomegranate seeds. So, Percy says, how are you feeling? It's not said with a huge amount of empathy, more like a manager at a quarterly review meeting. Percy would not make a good bartender. Anna slugs her drink back, wordlessly. Precious refills it. I'm not done. Whoever is. Anna is quiet for a minute, which is something of a statement in itself given how few of them she has left. You think you get to say that to me, when you're never going to have to face this? Percy's lips draw to a pencil-thin line. I'll die one day. I know when. I know how. It's not close, but it's sooner than I'd like. She sighs. But yes, it's not immediate. That particular arrow has not yet left its bow. I apologise. I didn't think. Precious says, it's just crossed into the ocean, to break the silence. Anna looks at her paper again, the circle, the angles and the lines. She turns it over. How long has this been happening here, Precious? Since 1752, Precious says. He winces a bit at the memory. 1751 was not happy. I remember, Percy says cried all the way to the stagecoach. That was when it moved. 
Anna asks. When this happens? Almost three months back, Precious says. It's hard to go so soon. So I've got a question, Anna says. No, Percy says, you can't stay longer. Okay. Although I was thinking maybe I could hang around. Just a bit. A month, say? Show the new kid the ropes? No. It would have been really useful for me in the early days. To have a bit of a guiding hand is all I'm saying. No. No, I suppose not. The clock on the wall does not show minutes, hours. Instead, a dial tracks the phases of the moon, one hand now pointing to full, and it ticks like a blade swinging ever lower. Outside, some excitable fireworks have gone off a few minutes early. The thing they celebrate is still over the sea, but rushing toward them just faster than sound. They are its heralds, and Anna knows that once they sounded for her. It seems so very long ago. You had a question? Percy prompts. Oh, yeah, I wanted to know why this was your job. Percy shrugs. People have always seen death and change as much the same thing and winter and death as much the same thing. Not winter and change, weirdly. But I guess no one ever said this logic had to be commutative. So, here I am. So which is this one? Death, change, or winter? Yes. Of course, Percy thinks, she had never really been the bringer of winter. She had not been the one to let in the cold, the hunger. That had been her mother throwing the most epic of straps over her daughter's life choices. She hadn't asked for an overbearing helicopter parent. She just wanted to be happy. And she had been. For a while. But she had known what would happen when she marched up to the man who had so enraptured her, looked him in the eye as she plucked six pomegranate seeds from the bowl in front of him one by one, then kissed him with sweet sour lips. She had known what would happen, and her heart had judged it a cost she wouldn't pay. Perhaps her reputation was fair. Where is it now? Anna asks. Still over the sea, best guess, Precious says. Won't be long. Time for one more? Of course. He finds a bottle of Backroads aged whiskey under the bar and pours a generous measure, the liquid settling at the bottom of the glass like it can't decide if it wants to be honey or lava. Anna fishes for her wallet, but Precious holds up a hand. Last one. It's on the house. Somewhere out there, Anna knows. It's coming. The arrow that will strike her dead. It started halfway around the world 12 hours ago and has been flying toward her ever since, moving at the speed of time. Do you think people will remember me? She asks. Some people, I'm sure, Precious says. Only some. It's the way of things, says Percy. It's the same for you, for me, for all of them out there. For some people, if they ever wrote a book about their life, it'd be impossible to leave you out. For others, you'd touch them lightly and that was all. No one gets to be a main character in everyone's story. Tell that to 2020, Anna says. Prefer it my way, to be honest. She looks at Precious again, to ask where it is, but Precious has vanished into the kitchen. Approaching the coast, Percy answers for him. It moves so fast, Anna says. Waits for no one, Percy says. Famously. I feel like I should have some last words. Anna swirls the whiskey in her glass, 
watches it break against the ice cubes like waves crashing on a rock. What's next? Honestly, Percy says, I don't know. Not for you. Well, it'll be an adventure. Precious returns from the kitchen with a large, steaming mug of hot chocolate. Marshmallows are dotted on the top, just starting to melt. Landfall, he says quietly. It's here. Anna sips the whiskey, looks out the window facing east, towards a sunrise she will never see. I should have started drinking this earlier, she says. Oh hey, I like that. Tell them those were my last words. Outside, the bells have begun to strike midnight. Once. Twice. Percy gets off her bar stool and moves to the door. Time's up, Anna says. She raises the half-finished whiskey glass. All right if I take this? It's yours, Precious says. Good luck, Anna. The bells toll on. Nine... Ten, eleven, and stop. Outside the crown and anchor, nothing moves. The bells have paused mid-swing. Leaves which had been fluttering in the light breeze are frozen in place. A fox hangs mid-trot across a quiet road. And there is a knock at the window. A child is there, tapping at the glass. He looks cold, scared, fresh as moonlight. Anna opens the door and he nervously hangs about on the threshold. Anna straddles it with him and gets down on her haunches to look him eye to eye. Hey, Annas, she says, and kisses him lightly on the forehead. If you're watching closely, you might see a brief spark leap from lip to skin. I know it's all a bit frightening at the moment. But you got this, okay? You'll do fine. She stands up again and addresses Percy. Come on, then. Percy nods. Let's get you to the bus. See you next year, precious. As they leave and Annas walks warily inside, the final bell tolls, the leaves begin to rustle, the fox trots on. Hello? He says. Hello, Precious says. This is the part he finds most awkward. He doesn't get much practice talking to children. He helps Annas onto a bar stool and gives him the hot chocolate. Happy New Year? The boy cradles the cup like a shield. I hope so. Murder Prometheus is written by Neil Merton. The voice of the city is Kate Angier with music and production by me, Tris Oten. For free merch, bonus episodes and behind the scenes content, support us at patreon.com forward slash Murder Prometheus. If you're not ready for that kind of commitment, please rate and review us on iTunes, Spotify or wherever you're listening to this right now. Our next story is due on the Stay Home Moon, the 25th of January. Leave a hot chocolate outside your door this new year. You never know who might need it.